can see that I've disturbed you. How stupid of me. I I'll just be going now. Don't go. It takes a one-of-a-kind imagination to bring a reanimated mutt, a corpse bride, and a hyperactive ghost to life. <sighs> Looks like I'm next. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Tim Burton characters. Which would mean that I'm not real. For this list, we're taking a look at the most compelling and iconic characters either created by Tim Burton or featured in his movies. We will win! Be Number 10. Sparky, Frankenweenie. Sparky? <laughs> Tim Burton tends to work deceased canines into every one of his stop motion features. You're alive. You're alive. Sparky the dog takes center stage in Frankenweenie, a remake of Burton's 1984 short film of the same name. Sparky's alive! Sparky? After getting hit by a car, Sparky is brought back to life by his loving owner, Victor Frankenstein. But the wind isn't strong enough to put an animal back from the dead. For that, you need lightning. Although he's covered in stitches and occasionally loses his tail, Frankenstein's mongrel is as lovable as ever. Sparky, it's okay, boy. It's just me. Like many of Burton's characters, Sparky demonstrates that companionship and warmth can be found in even the most unusual places. <laughs> Number 9. Edward Bloom, Big Fish. Man, my name's Edward Bloom. Edward Bloom is either the most fascinating man who ever lived or the world's greatest storyteller. What's your name, Diane? Well, mine's Edward. In either case, his tale is an epic for the ages that takes him on adventures involving a giant, a werewolf, and conjoined twins. Bob Hope? Daddy. <laughs> Even with such an outlandish supporting cast, Edward Bloom still stands out as the film's most engaging character. What's your name? Edward Bloom. Hmm. Bloom like a flower? Yes. Clever and resilient while also being wide-eyed and humble, Bloom's a truly extraordinary person who never shows off. If there was one thing you can say about Edward Bloom is that I am a social person. No matter where he goes, he'll always be the biggest fish in the pond. You become what you always were. A very big fish. Number eight, The Penguin, Batman Returns. Hey, my name is not Oswald! It's Penguin! It's hard to say whether we should feel sorry for the Penguin or despise him. I am not a human being! I am an animal! Cold-blooded! Sure, he was born with horrible physical disfigurements and abandoned by his parents. <laughs> Does his tragic backstory excuse his plot to take over Gotham and kidnap the firstborn children of the city's wealthiest families? You're not the mayor. Things change. There's being misunderstood, and then there's being clouded by crazed vengeance. Just the pussy I've been looking for. Nevertheless, Burton and Danny DeVito really put their own unique signatures on the Penguin altering him from a wannabe gentleman to a grotesque beast that's more animal than man. The liberation of Gotham has begun! Number seven, Emily, Corpse Bride. It's Emily. Emily. Emily encompasses Burton's gift for unearthing beauty from the grim and bizarre. Emily. You! But, but, I left you. Voiced by Helena Bonham Carter, Emily spends her afterlife under a tree waiting for someone to ask for her hand. So she made a vow lying under that tree that she'd wait for her true love to come set her free. Always waiting for someone to ask for her hand. When the bumbling Victor unknowingly places a ring on Emily's twig-like finger, a grave misunderstanding arises. He's married to a corpse. He has a corpse bride. There must be some way to undo what's been done. Despite her departure, Emily is full of more life than most people on Earth. I love you, Victor. 
Wait, you're not mine. While she doesn't get a conventional happy ending, the corpse bride is left with a heartfelt reminder of what true love means and starts a new life after death. But first, a toast to Emily. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Number six, Batman, the Batman franchise. I'm going to kill you. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. After years of being primarily associated with the campy 60s series, Batman returned to his darker roots through Burton's 1989 blockbuster. Hold on. Michael Keaton shocked everyone, not only with his portrayal of Batman, but also with his portrayal of Bruce Wayne. It's Japanese. How do you know? Because I bought it in Japan. Who are you? Oh, sorry, Bruce Wayne. Keaton conveys so many deep emotions without ever speaking. He gets everything across through restrained facial expressions and the occasional subtle line of dialogue explaining why he needs to fight crime as a bat. Sometimes I don't know what to think about this. It's just something I have to do. Why? Because nobody else can. Plus, you'll be hard-pressed to find an actor who can say, I'm Batman, cooler than him. What are you? I'm Batman. Number five, Ed Wood. Mr. Feldman, Ed Wood. Burton's interpretation of Ed Wood remains true to the real-life director's eccentric spirit, while also creating an unforgettable original character. Dr. Acula. Dr. Acula. I don't get it. Ed Wood wants nothing more than to make movies and share them with the world. And action! The problem is that he settles for the shoddiest sets, casts the most amateur actors, and never does more than one take. Well, I don't think he's a schmuck. What about this title? My poster says I changed my sex. While it would be easy to turn him into a cheap cartoon, Ed Wood is actually a surprisingly inspirational individual who motivates every artist to follow their passions even if they probably shouldn't. I like to wear women's clothes. Huh? I like to wear women's clothes. Number four, the Joker, Batman. You can call me Joker. Heath Ledger has pretty much cemented himself as the definitive Joker. But let's not forget how spectacular Jack Nicholson was in the role almost two decades earlier. And what's with that stupid grin? Life's been good to me. <laughs> Just as the Joker inadvertently created Batman, Batman accidentally creates the Joker after dropping mobster Jack Napier into a chemical vat. <laughs> Deformed with white skin and an eternal smile, the clown prince of crime unleashes his playful madness on Gotham through electrifying hand buzzers and toxic party balloons. Those are my balloons. Funny, creepy, and stylish, he's still Batman's greatest enemy ever and one of our top bad guys here. You must possess strength to inflict pain, Bob. We've got a flying mouse to kill. Number three. Jack Skellington, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, where are we? Although he's a skeleton, you're unlikely to encounter a friendlier or more exuberant resident of Halloween Town than Jack Skellington. The wave of my hand in a well-placed mode. I have swept the very bravest off their feet. Only able to confide in his dog Zero, Jack is tired of going through the same routine every year. Eureka! This year? Christmas will be ours! The Pumpkin King is immediately enchanted by the magic of Christmas Town and takes over the role of Sandy Claus with his own gothic twist. Merry Christmas! And what is your name? Things might not go as he hoped, but Jack is still able to look back on the experience with the optimistic notion that he did his best. Well, what the heck? I went and did my best, and my god, I really tasted something swell. Number two, Beetlejuice. What I mean is, can you be scary? Oh, oh, I know that you're asking me. Can I be scary? What do you think of this? <laughs> It's 
fitting that Tim Burton started his career as an animator, since even most of his live-action films have the essence of living cartoons. The only one I think I can deal with is that Growl and Poe's daughter. I think she understands me. You leave her alone, you... <laughs> Beetlejuice feels as if he jumped straight out of Burton's sketchbook into reality. Ooh, Beetlejuice? You know... Yes, that's it! Her name's Beetlejuice? Ah, you said it twice, just say it once more, come on. Michael Keaton never hits a wrong note as the fast-talking supernatural being who continues to crack people up even as a ghost. Look, I want you might call an illegal alien, okay? I want out for good. In order for me to do that, hey, I gotta get married. Granted, Beetlejuice is mischievous, a pervert, and always puts himself before others. We need to work something out ourselves. We just have to talk. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey! Excuse me? What? Excuse me. In a long lineup of creative characters from Burton, though, he is definitely the life of the party. What do I have to do to strike a deal with you two? Huh? <laughs> Don't you hate it when that happens? Let's go, Barbara. Wait, 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 come on. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Put it on the bun. You never know if it's going to run. I am. I am Constable Ichabod Crane, sent to you from New York to investigate murder in Sleepy Hollow. Hello, Daddy. It's me, Pee Wee. Number one, Edward Scissorhands. What's your name? Edward. If Beetlejuice proved that Burton was the master of mixing darkness and comedy, Edward Scissorhands proved that he was also a master of mixing darkness and drama. Edward, um, would you? Thank you. That's not to say Edward's unfinished hands don't lead to some humorous bits. Alexis? Oh, this can't possibly be my Alexis! The quiet, sincere Edward is truly a tragic figure, though, who must live with the fact that he'll never be able to hold the woman he loves. The first of many collaborations between Johnny Depp and Burton, Edward Scissorhands is a modern fairy tale character who will live in our hearts forever. How do you know he's still alive? Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite Tim Burton character? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.